All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started then. Uh, uh, CEO, everybody. My name is Roy Boney Jr. I'm with the Cherokee Nation Language Program. Uh, and my co-presenter, Jeff Edwards, is also with the, the department as well. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to throw a bit of history at you today. Uh, the, the idea about, you've probably seen the, some of the presentation yesterday about Cherokee Silberry from like Monique and uh, Chris. Uh, today, we're going to talk a bit more about that in-depth history and how we got to where we are and the importance of typography for Cherokee language and where we need to go from here. Uh, so again, we'll throw a lot of history at you. Our talk is called From Talking Leaves the Pixels. Uh, so in Cherokee, that's Jugalog, Ani Moniski, Diti Los Tana, Nida Yudale Nagi, which is kind of saying it's from the beginning, from talking leaves to, to now, kind of pictures is what it's really saying in Cherokee. And we call it talking leaves because that's what they say, Sequoia, I kind of refer to that is that our writing system, but there's a debate about that, but we won't go to that here. Just <laughs> we're going to take a lot to cover today. <clears throat> So Sequoia here, this is a portrait of Sequoia. He's the man that invented our Cherokee writing system. Uh, he uh, spent roughly uh, uh, several well, several years in, uh, working on it from 1809 to 1821. Uh, he went through a lot of variations on the syllabary. At the bottom of this slide, you'll see that's how he wrote his name in syllabary. Uh, so last year was the bicentennial of the Cherokee syllabary. So we had 200 years of our language of writing system out there for the people. So when Sequoia initially developed the, the Cherokee syllabary, it was like this is uh, it was like this. You had cursive. Uh, it was done with the design with the a quill and a pen, ink. So you can see how it's very flowing and curvilinear. Uh, so this is the first iteration of how uh, Sequoia actually invented and made our writing. There are 86 characters. Uh, we don't use all 86 now, we use 85. Uh, but again, you can see how complicated that was. And so as, as he was working on it, he started introducing this to the community. And in the community, the people started modifying what he had written slightly and as they wrote letters and things. So here's a more of a modern version of it that was modified a few years later after it was released. You can see it kind of made some changes from that cursive we went to more, I guess, print style. <clears throat> And one reason for that uh, was we were developing a printing press. The Cherokee Nation in 1827 allocated some funds. The first printing of the Cherokee Celebrate chart in the Cherokee Phoenix in 1828. So this represents uh, all our Cherokee syllables in the writing system. Uh, here's an actual photo of some of the actual type itself that was housed in the Cherokee National Research Center archives. Uh, Jeff Edwards actually took this photo. We curated an exhibit several years ago about the writing system, and so we put together uh, all these uh, displays showing some of the actual typeset and some historical documents that we had in Cherokee language. So this slide here is just a short sample of how the writing system evolved. Again, we went from the cursive to a more simplified uh, handwritten version to this print version. So this is uh, the picture of an actual type character in Cherokee. This is the O character. Now, this is reversed because if it was printed, you know, when you do printing, it's printed the other way. But this is just an example to show you how this, how the writing uh, evolved through time. So throughout the 19th century, uh, Cherokee Nation and missionary, Christian missionaries printed a whole lot of materials in Cherokee language. We have a lot of hymn books, uh, we have dictionaries, we have arithmetic books, we have primers, and there's all kinds of anything you can think of that was written, we have a version of it. So there are estimates, there are about 13 million pages of Cherokee text printed in the 19th century. That was from uh, 1828 to roughly 1907. And 1907 is when a lot of printing stopped because that's when Oklahoma became a state and they shut down a lot of tribal operations. So we went into a lull for our writing system for a bit. Uh, we kind of picked it back up in the mid 20th century. Again, just a few more samples of some of the writing that we have in Silbury showing it. It's a very nicely designed set of type. Some of the characters may resemble English uh, characters and other languages too. Some of the characters kind of resemble a Russian Cyrillic and there's some Greek uh, alphabet that looks like they're kind of influenced by this, but they do not sound anything like that. It has its own unique sound. And so 
uh, the Cherokee Nation printed a lot of newspapers. Uh, we have one of the largest you know, collections of native thought that, that has been recorded in North America because we have our own writing system. So we, uh, the tribe with all these newspapers, this one's from the Cherokee Advocate. At the top, it has the name of the paper in Cherokee syllabary. It says Cherokee Jaligi Osteliski, which means kind of a Cherokee helper. And the idea of this newspaper was to advocate for tribes in the United States at the removal time and afterward. Uh, so focus not just on Cherokee Nation, but other tribes as well. And so this writing system was being seen across the United States and even subscribers are overseas were giving these papers too. So the whole world was being exposed to Cherokee writing. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, you know, a lot of our print operations ceased. Uh, the printing presses were closed when Oklahoma became a state in 1907. But uh, be, despite that happening, there were independent you know, people that were making things. So there were a lot of typewriters that were made too. So when you think of uh, the printing press, which for Cherokee language which is in 1828, we had the first Cherokee typeset. From then till the mid 20th century, every form of writing technology that came out was adapted to the Cherokee syllabary. So you, we had printing presses, we had typewriters, we even had shorthand. I mean, there's a lot of different things that we had in Cherokee syllabary. Uh, but most, for the most part, between 1900 and 1950, most Cherokee uh, writing was handwritten. Uh, and so in the mid 20th century, a lot of people will start making uh, their own typewriters and typesets and things again. Uh, this is a picture of a, a Cherokee typewriter from the 1960s. This is the old Hermes style typewriter. You can see inside it's got each of the heads has the Cherokee uh, characters on it. They were mapped to certain specific key keys on the keyboard, and that kind of carries over to a bit later. But Jeff will talk more about that stuff. But uh, this this image here is one of my favorite things. It's the uh, IBM Selectric type, Typewriter Elements. In the mid 70s, Cherokee Nation was looking for ways to revitalize their language programs. And one way to do it was this new technology of the this electric typewriter. And if you're not familiar with the IBM Selectric, it was a real big game changer for, in terms of you know, writing uh, because it would let you switch out the uh, element and make a different font size here and there. And it, even like you could do bold and italic and all that kind of thing but from a typewriter. So Cherokee had this made as well. Uh, our treasurer at the time, his name was Scott Gregor. He told me they spent about $25,000 getting these things uh, produced. Uh, they used a company in Hawaii to actually get these uh, produced for the tribe. And with that, the tribe created a lot of materials that we still use to this day. Probably most notably, uh, the Cherokee Language Dictionary by Durbin Filling and William Polte. Uh, that document is the most referenced Cherokee uh, document that we have outside the New Testament. Uh, people use that to learn uh, Cherokee, to research Cherokee, and so it was made using these typewriter elements. And this slide here, I like to show this because for typographers specifically, I think everyone kind of knows or should know who Herman Zopp was. If you use a computer now, you use several of his fonts or they're actually installed on your machines. Uh, Herman uh, was making a Cherokee type, typeset, a font, actually, back in 1976. He was working on this. Uh, there were two avenues that were going into it. One was uh, at the university. It was at the time, I think it was the University of Wisconsin, I want to say. Uh, he was doing a project with digital typography, you know, because computers were still in their very early stages at this, at this point, the PCs. And that's around the time of the uh, first uh, Macs were going to come out. So Steve Jobs was actually interested in having a Cherokee font made for the Apple system because, he, as, as you may know, he was interested in writing systems and fonts. That was kind of a passion of his. And so this is a sample drawing showing Herman Zopp from his notebook, you know, working on Cherokee typeset. Uh, this is an early prototype, and it never was fully produced. But years later, uh, another Cherokee or another uh, typographer would actually take the basis of this and make a Cherokee font out of it, which would, it actually ended up eventually on the Apple uh, Mac OS desktop in around 2002 or three. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jeff Edwards here, and he can talk a bit more about the more modern elements of what we do here at Cherokee Nation. He can, he'll showcase some of his own work too. All right. Uh, I've been taunting people in the chat and uh, I got hypnotized by it and I almost forgot it was my turn. Um, we always talk about the, uh, the history of the Cherokee uh, syllabary because it's we've always adopted the latest technology that were available 
at the time. And the simple reasoning is for communication, whether it be communicating with the letter and uh, with the typewriter all the way up until computer times. That's kind of where I take over. Um, Cherokee Nation adopted a word processor. Uh, they worked with uh, through Wilma Mankiller and one of our late translators, Durbin Feeling, and they were able to produce a word processor uh, so that it, once again we can continue using our font and uh, communicating with our people. And then in the in the late '90s, nothing really happened from the word processor on up, and we decided we were going to jump into computers. Um, of course, that was the thing for the time. And so this is a Cherokee font that was designed by Cherokee Nation, uh, 1999 to 2000. And um, as you can see, it's not the greatest thing, but it's the only thing we had and it was better than nothing. Um, the, the the bad part about this is, as you guys will know, as uh, typographers, they didn't actually make this a font. They went in and took an existing font, removed the characters, and then added the Cherokee uh, characters you see on the screen. And in the beginning, it worked okay. But as different versions started coming out, if I emailed someone with version one, and I had version 1.2, instead of seeing the Cherokee syllabary, all they saw was just a bunch of, you know, garbled text, uh, English, different things mixed in, because we weren't using the same font. And this is kind of how you would type that. Uh, as you can see, uh, we lost a lot, kind of like with the typewriter screen, uh, we lost a lot of the function of the keyboard because this is a one key, one stroke method. Um, you simply held down the shift key along with uh, to get uppercase, which you see up at the top, as well as lowercase with the lower key. And thankfully in 2000, um, we learned about something called Unicode, which is an just a wonderful thing. Um, we started working and Syllabary was actually encoded into Unicode in 2000. At the time, I don't think anyone realized the importance of this. I know I didn't, but um, it was just, it was a life changing thing for the Cherokees and Cherokee Syllabary in general. And as you can see here, um, we always put this up Cherokee uppercase, and you'll see why we put uppercase later in the presentation. But to you guys, this is very common. Uh, everyone else would give this presentation to, not so much. Um, they don't understand that the very first character is the off character. It's just, it's, you know, it, it gets that tag of 13A0. So no matter what computer you're using it on, it doesn't matter what Cherokee font you're using, granted that it's Unicode, that all character is guaranteed to show up as it's supposed to. So this, this, this in itself, as far as uh, emailing, um, all that good stuff, it took care of basically all the problems we were having with our legacy true type font, where it didn't matter what fonts people had, as long as they had a Unicode font, uh, our issues went away. And so in 2003, we have a Cherokee Immersion School. It teaches three and four year olds all the way up to eighth grade now. Um, I believe at the time it started, it was sixth grade, but it goes all the way up to eighth grade. And in 2003, uh, Mac OS added a Cherokee font and a keyboard, and we had nothing to do with this. Um, it was just simply on there. Like Roy was saying, Steve Jobs was very interested in typography, which benefited us greatly because we were trying to start a school. And so naturally in 2003, we instantly adopted the Mac computers. All the kids from second grade all the way up through eighth grade received a computer. And it might be kind of hard to see on the screen there, but we had to develop a keyboard overlay. Um, when you're teaching a second grader how to type, you know, they need a cheat sheet, just like you would teaching English. And so we made this overlay just so that the kids could learn how to type the syllabary. And uh, this lady here, she's working on some fractions, it looks like. And so every kid was provided a computer uh, at the school with this overlay to be able to type, do their homework, send emails, et cetera. And uh, it was just a really good experience using Mac from there forward. And so we kind of worked uh, with the school there, um, myself and Roy, 
and just providing them with materials, anything that the school needed to get going. And then in 2009, we started realizing that in order to get these kids interested in their language, to be able to compete with the English world, we were going to have to turn the English world into a Cherokee world. And so thus Facebook localization started. If you want to get at a kid, you're going to have to be on a cell phone. You're going to have to have all the coolest apps. Anything that those kids might want to do on a phone is needed to be in Cherokee. So in 2009, we began working with Facebook. This is a really unique project because it's crowdsourced. So basically, if a person wants to say, uh, I believe the word for file should be this, they put it up and then a poll starts. It gets voted up. People can submit other you know, words for the word file and whatever word ends up winning, that is the word for file. So naturally, this is going to be translated by not only our Cherokee translation department, but Cherokees out in the community. We wanted to get that involvement uh, because as you'll see, dialects, all that good stuff, um, it, it plagues us. But at the same time, it's, it's nice to have. So this is an ongoing project. Um, as soon as we get 50% of Facebook translated, they release an update and we're back down to 10. So it's never ending. It'll always be going on. Uh, but this is kind of how we kind of started trying to get our kids involved. And instead of using that English device, we wanted them using a Cherokee device. And in order to be able to do that, we didn't have any support whatsoever on any type of technology up to that point. So myself and Roy, um, we worked with Apple and uh, we went with Apple because in 2003, they had already added a keyboard and a font to their operating system. So why not add it to the most popular device in the world? So uh, this was a very hush hush type deal. We can't say who helped this because the guy at Apple was not supposed to do this. He was simply a typographer and he was a rebel. And uh, so he, kind of snuck this in uh, about 10 minutes before it released to the world there on September the 9th, 2010. And out of nowhere, we had Cherokee support on the iPhone. And a lot of people say, well, where do I go to get this Cherokee app? Well, what makes this so cool is it's not an app. It's actually a part of the operating system. And what that does for us as Cherokees is we will never be taken off of this device once you're added. And so out of nowhere, overnight, 40 million people had the ability to turn on a Cherokee keyboard and text, email, do all the cool stuff that they ever wanted to do in Cherokee on an iPhone. This is kind of what the keyboard layout looks like. The top are the consonants and then the bottom row there that you see with the I can't count six are our vowels and we won't really go into how you use that. The important thing to know is, is we're on the iPhone and uh, that opened many doors for us uh, in the future. And so once the iPhone came out, um, Cherokees all of a sudden became very popular. Um, the tech companies were freaking out because Native Americans, we were the first Native Americans represented on any type of device and everybody and their mama wanted to work with us. And so we were contacted by Google and they naturally, as a technology company, they want to outdo the previous technology company. So Google wanted us to do Google search, which you see there on your left. And they did this really cool thing. That keyboard you see there is a virtual floating keyboard. So not only could you use that on the Google search homepage, but you could also drag this keyboard off to your computer if you didn't have the ability to type in Cherokee via a keyboard or font, then all of a sudden you had it right there. Um, and in, since we completed that project, they were that was about a 6,000 term uh, that they needed to translate this. And of course, we were all scared to death because uh, there are no technology terms per se in the Cherokee language. So all these things had to be created. And in 2012, we were successful with uh, the homepage. So they were like, hey, let's do Gmail. So we did Gmail. Uh, not going to lie, I cannot remember how many terms were translated. It was definitely more than 6,000. So we also have Gmail available to 
anyone that wants to turn it on, it's just a simple toggle. Turn on Cherokee. If you get lost, it's really simple to turn the English back on. So we have Gmail in Cherokee as well. Now the big one, uh, Windows approached this, um, and this one's the scary one. They wanted to outdo everything everybody had ever done up to that point, and they said, how do you guys feel about translating an operating system? Well, that's way different than a web page and Gmail running via a web page. Uh, they gave us an 18-month deadline. They had worked with two, or no, I take that back, three previous Native American tribes, and as far as those tribes got was about 1% into the translation. And then they had to pull out. It was just simply too much. And so they didn't really put the heat on us, but they kind of did. They said, we'll work with you on this. But if you guys don't do it, we're not going to work with any more Native American tribes. No pressure. So and we gave, they gave us 18 months. The number is all over the place. But we're going to say definitely at least 600,000 words had to be translated to make this a reality. Not This is not just what you see, the operating system, errors, behind the screen stuff, everything, the GUI is a 100% Cherokee operating system. Thank the Lord, we accomplished it, we met our deadline, and then we were the first Native American tribe with our own operating system. And it was really neat. Uh, Bill Gates was happy to announce that North America had previously only had one version of Windows, which was English, and now they had two, which was English and Cherokee. So that was really a rewarding process after the fact. During the time, I think we all thought we were going to die, but we did accomplish it. And uh, so we had Windows 8 2012 entirely in the Cherokee language. And again, uh, tech companies, if you ain't worked with them, you will know they're very pushy. Uh, they wanted to outdo Windows, so they said, let's do Office Online. Sure, we're glad to. So we started working on Office Online. The reason we went with Office Online is we want our people to never have to purchase anything to use our language. That is extremely important to us. And so we started working on this because as everyone knows, um, I don't even know if it's called OneDrive anymore at the time it was, but um, you could log on, you could use Office, uh, the office suite basically for free online. So what you see here is uh, basically office online entirely everything from menus, all that good stuff is in the Cherokee language and they adopted this at the school and of course still use it today as well as our citizens. And so me and Roy, we went to Google many times and every time we went, we taunted Google. Um, Apple came out with uh, Cherokee on the iPhone in 2010. What's up? You know, we, we taunted Google horribly. Uh, we knew them all very well, so we were comfortable in doing this. But what we were secret, what we were actually trying to do is Google understood that you can go to Walmart and you can get an Android for free with a phone plan opposed to an iPhone that's going to cost $1,200 to be able to get. Our people don't have that kind of money. So secretly, our tauntings were not so much a taunt, but a plea. Um, we needed Google to pick up the slack because we wanted all of our Cherokees to have the ability to do everything that the iPhone could do. And of course, the Android was the answer to that. So Google worked really hard. We flew out there. I don't even know how many times I've been to San Francisco, over 40. We worked with their topographers. We worked with their keyboard developers. And in 2014, uh, Android gave us Cherokee support, which was really, really, really an awesome thing because now you didn't have to have the fancy phone to be able to email, display, all that good stuff that Cherokee bought on your phone or your, your mobile devices. And then, of course, Windows 10 came around. It was still a very big undertaking. Um, you know, as Windows goes, everybody updates. And uh, this was probably about a 250,000 word 
uh, extra translation on top of what we already did. And of course, um, the, the, the deadlines weren't quite as strenuous because we had proven ourselves to Windows. And so um, when the Windows 10 update did come out, we were successful, of course, in meeting that as well. And that's also adopted by the Cherokee Nation as well. Um, one of the really cool things that come out of Unicode that we never really, uh, I don't want to say we didn't take interest in, that makes us sound like jerks. Um, we didn't know about this, that anytime you go into Unicode, you have to have a Cherokee Braille equivalent. So in 2014, we started working with the Commonwealth Braille and Talking Book Cooperative to develop Cherokee Braille. Luckily for us, we have, well, um, a Muscogee School of the Blind. It's about a 25-minute drive from us. And so we were able to get this Braille out. And it just kind of stayed kind of, I don't want to say stagnant, but um, we didn't have any use for it. And so because uh, uh, we didn't have any Cherokees that wanted to learn Braille at the time. But then in around 2020, I believe, Cherokee, uh, the Muscogee School of the Blind contacted us. So I've been working with the guide of Lawrence, Kansas to actually be able to see what you have on the screen, but actually make it usable for uh, blind people that want to learn the Cherokee syllabary. We're working on flashcards, all kinds of stuff like that. And so um, this was just kind of a cool little thing that came out of working with Unicode that we didn't even know uh, was a possibility. And then, of course, we announced there in 2000 that uppercase Cherokee, so everything up to this point was in uppercase. So Unicode, we worked with Unicode, and in 2015, they released lowercase Cherokee. Um, this is kind of important when you're trying to teach children where a sentence begins, um, you know, all these different things, ascenders, descenders. You know, and so um, in 2015, we were our Unicode for lowercase was accepted. And uh, so now we have the ability uh, to type uppercase and lowercase. This is awesome if you're doing something like the Cherokee Bible, different things like that, where you need to put an emphasis on, for example, GSAW, Jesus's name, things like that. We need it capitalized. So we're able to use all lowercase and capitalize things that should be capitalized. And now I kind of get to have fun, um, poke fun at the Cherokee syllabary. What you see on your left is a Cherokee syllabary chart. Um, myself and Roy were both um, artists here at Cherokee Nation. So in our in our downtime, uh, we create Cherokee artwork. We try to use as much of the Cherokee syllabary as humanly possible. So what I call on the left is your typical Cherokee syllabary chart. There's nothing wrong with it. If you're trying to learn Cherokee, you might want to pick that one. Whereas on the right is called a typical Cherokee syllabary uh, chart. All the characters are there and they're represented in 17 different fonts, blown out, uh, insane, chaotic. That's kind of, that's a piece of my artwork that I made. Um, like I said, I love using the Cherokee syllabary in our work. So you've got a typical one, which if you're trying to learn something is cool, but if you want a really cool one, then the one on the right is uh, kind of more modern and contemporary. And uh, so this is just kind of the, some of the stuff we do, how we incorporate Cherokee syllabary into our artwork. And then here on the left, um, you know, we also, this is again a piece that I just recently created. Um, this is kind of a story piece um, because all of our stories are kind of handed down via word of mouth and they're not, we're getting them digitized now, but, you know, once we get those things digitized, they will be around for, for centuries, for millennial, for however long, you know, they're going to be around. So I wanted to make a piece of, this is the Uktana. Um, he's a really mean creature that the Cherokees conjured up, and then after they didn't need him, they cast him out. So on the Cherokee that you see there, um, that's basically telling the story of the Uktana and him being cast out into the mountains. And then on your right here, um, you know, we always talk about communicating. Um, you know, Cherokees are always about communicating, so if you're brave enough, um, I made this Ouija board. So if you need to talk to some of your ancestors to get some advice, 
then you've got a Ouija board available to you as well. Um, our artwork is always fun. We don't take ourselves seriously. Um, you know, this is just kind of how we roll. We're, we're behaving because we're talking to you fine folks, but we don't act like this outside of this presentation at all. I'll turn it over to Roy. <laughs> yeah, Jeff's definitely not lying there. <laughs> So we're going to be wrapping up here in a bit, but before we leave, we wanted to show this. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, 2021 was the bicentennial year of the Cherokee Celebrates Creation. So throughout the year, the Cherokee Nation hosted a series of events uh, celebrating this, which was kind of hard to do because it was, you know, COVID and everything was happening. But one thing that we did do that was really fun is we commissioned a set of new typeset to do uh, an actual, you know, old school type run, run. So we worked with a friend of ours named uh, Bobby Martin, who's a uh, Muskogee Creek, and he's a professor at the at John Brown University in Salem Springs, Arkansas. And they have a, a, a press there that he let us use. So we did some typeset. And what this typeset is, it says, uh, basically told you a lot about what we just talked about with the history of the syllabary for Sequoia's invention to now. And we had this all translated into Cherokee, and our chief, uh, Chuck Hoskin Jr., uh, made a proclamation of October 15th as Sequoia Day. So every year now, uh, Cherokee Nation will celebrate that day as, uh, as noting as the, the, the day that the Cherokee Council formally adopted the Cherokee syllabus as a writing system back in the 1800s. So it's a monumental celebration, a good uh, you know, stopping point here, but we printed thousands of these to give out at an event so a lot of people have these going uh, in their homes now so it, they're pretty neat collector's items and it is all old school print and so we'll wrap up here uh this this slide here shows you know that original portrait of sequoia that everybody kind of sees in all the history books and as we talked about our progress here from the handwriting the script the print the digital this slide kind of kind of portrays that. So the middle, we got a Photoshop of a uh, Sequoia holding an iPad, looking at the Cherokee Phoenix website. Uh, the final image is a, a piece of my art. I want to throw some of that in this, as Sequoia in the modern era. I'm a huge fan of The Simpsons. So I'd like to imagine, you know, the guest stars on The Simpsons are usually celebrities and things. So I was like, to us, Sequoia is a celebrity. So I'd like to see him in an episode of The Simpsons someday, maybe. I don't know, just kind of wishful thinking, but. Uh, thank you for uh, listening to us, and we hope you enjoyed our presentation. Well done.